Hello and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. John's special guest today is Russell Anthony Bazzelli, who is a second-generation American. Russell graduated locally from Norton, Ohio, where he is a member of both their Sports Hall of Fame and Distinguished Alumni. He graduated from Cal Poly College in California and then graduated from the University of Akron Law School. And most importantly, he is blessed to be married to his beautiful wife, Gail, and has a blended family of seven children. Russ started his career as a City of Akron prosecutor and then moved to the Summit County Prosecutor's Office. He then entered civil practice of law at Rizal and Andrus and then moving to a position as Medina County Probate and Juvenile Magistrate, and finally in private practice here in Wadsworth. Let's join John and his special guest, Russell Pazelli. Russ, welcome to Wat Talk. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, it took you a while, but I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I've been, you've been on my list. You've been busy, you've been busy. Yeah, huh? I really have, and then of course, uh, you, you're the guy that's been busy. I mean, you, you. most recently yeah. tried a death penalty case right here in Medina County, correct? Correct. And um, I had a, some opportunities to pop in and out of Judge Kim Kimbler's court to see in action, um, but I guess I, I really just was sort of serendipity. How long did that trial go on? It's a two and a half week trial. You were actually in trial for two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. yes. I see. Okay. Well. You know, we have you here today to talk about capital punishment, which I think is a topic that many of my, my viewers would like to learn more about, and, and we respect the fact you have extensive experience in, in this area. Uh, however, uh, you know, why don't we set a disclaimer now? I know this person that you represented, um, unfortunately, has actually been sentenced to death, uh, yes. but I, I take it this case is in appeal. Correct. And will be for a number of years. Correct. Okay, so we didn't bring you here to dissect that case. Thank you. Okay. Because you knew I, I can't. You can't. You can't, and I know that. But, uh, but a relevant topic. I mean, it was uh, that particular case. Well, I think all capital cases will be extensively covered in the local media. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm, I, I know you were knee deep in that thing. Not just for the two and a half weeks. You worked on it for about two years going up to it, right? Well, and there was a, even a change of counsel in that case um, uh, who had an illness and God bless him, very, very smart, uh, Ed Bowers, and uh, he's doing fine now. Yeah. But I mean, he had the foresight to say, you know, just in case I could turn ill during the trial, that would be a problem. So he bowed out and the judge uh, saw me and said, hey, you're Rule 20 certified, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, good. Uh, starting on Monday. <laughs> so yeah, but it was a... Uh, so Judge Kim Kimbler actually appointed you to that particular yeah, case. And, you know, I thank him uh, for that opportunity. I've been doing this for 26 years plus now, and I thank him for that opportunity of trying that case. Yeah. You know, it's a, an involved process for all of us, and my compliments to it all all of the attorneys on that case. And I'm not just saying that, you know, to say it, I'm saying because these guys really worked hard on it. Uh, I compliment, uh, of course, the Medina County Prosecutor, Dean Holman, as well, Matt Rizavi, yeah. and of course, Carrie O'Brien that I tried Your his co -counsel. case with. Co-counsel, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's dig in, Russ. All right. What are some examples of crimes? I wrote some notes down here for you. What are some examples of crimes, if, if they were committed in the state of Ohio, that would actually carry death penalty? I'm glad you asked that <laughs> <laughs> I made some notes. All right. um, I looked at uh, Revised Code 2929-04, and it sets forth what are called the specifications, uh, which are the death specifications in Ohio. First, you have to have committed uh, the crime of aggravated murder, as it's defined under, what, 290301 of the Revised Code, or one of those numbers. Yeah, okay. And then you have to have a specification, and the specification is what triggers the capital murder case. In Ohio, there are 10. Uh, the 
first and the last, uh, the A1 and the A10, to my knowledge. In Ohio, there's never been a capital murder case. A1 deals with the assassination of the president or vice president okay. or candidate for the offices of president or vice president. And the same, uh, it covers governor and lieutenant governor. Oh. Now, the A-10 is, uh, we have an A-10 uh, case, if you will, in the uh, Sari Nave case, but that's a federal case, not an Ohio yep. case, uh, where someone is killed as the result of an act of terrorism. But again, an A-10 case in Ohio, I'm not aware that one has occurred or been okay. indicted as such. I know we had the case up in Cuyahoga County where those young men were uh, attempting to blow a bridge up, right. which could have been the trigger offense, but uh, fortunately that was diffused well before, yep. no pun intended. Now, uh, an A2 uh, violation uh, that uh, I made some notes here, and I was going through these different offenses. There's uh, an offense that is committed for hire. Uh, the best example I can come up with was a case that I worked on when I was going to law school. It was the state versus Frederick Milo. In the Milo case, uh, just very quickly, we had two brothers and a sister. Their father had started a barber uh, supply company out yeah. of the trunk of his car. And I mean, this thing just took off. And then one of the brothers, Dean Milo, uh, was perceived by his brother Fred and sister Sophie as trying to take all the power and pushing them out of the business. Ultimately, um, both Fred uh, and his sister were voted out of the company. Fred then hired someone, I think it was out of Arizona, a hitman. Okay. Who well, this is your classic hitman case, just like that's you on television. And that's it. And that is that B2 violation. Ultimately, after trial, uh, he was convicted uh, of capital murder. And there were successive appeals. Uh, ultimately, he passed away in before. prison before. But the guy uh, who actually hired the hitman, he's the one that faced the capital. He's the one who faced the capital murder So that, would be, a, that would be a category. So here. that would be one of the categories. Uh, the next category is where uh, someone commits the offense in A3 to avoid uh, detection uh, for the commission of a crime. And that's a, the case that comes to mind is State versus Hooks. And in that case, horrible case. These are all horrible cases. Uh, not that you could rank them, um, but in this, in a, by way of example, uh, Mr. Hooks killed his friend, uh, Mr. Danes, over an argument over money at Mr. Danes home. He did this outside in a vehicle. Then Mr. Hooks went back into the uh, Dane household and he killed Mr. Dane's wife and 16-year-old son. I see. Bludgeoned them to death. And the idea was, ultimately, in the confession, that he would avoid detection by killing everyone there. Okay. Uh, the A4 uh, violation is, uh, yeah. if I may continue. Sure, no, by okay. all. Okay. Uh, an A4 violation uh, <laughs> deals with uh, where someone uh, escapes from some type of restraint or prison, which would be an example of the Sepik case as it was indicted. Uh, it's alleged that in that case that Stephen uh, broke uh, his detention. He was at an Oriana house mm -hmm. and then he was taken to, I think it was St. Thomas Hospital, and then uh, to be checked for an injury. And he um, allegedly left there and then subsequently uh, the allegation and he was convicted of the murder of Mr. Munns as a result of a burglary. Yeah. That, that's an example of the A4. Um, the A5 is the one that seems to get uh, all of the, the press, if you will, the sensationalism. That's the, the multiple murder rule. Some of the examples would be the, the Sal case up in Cleveland, uh, the Beardsley case, Craigslist here in Summit yeah. County, yeah. And, and, and there are others. Um, the A6 uh, is the law officer where there is an aggravated murder and the victim uh, of that aggravated murder is a police, police officer. officer. I see. A um, couple examples. Uh, the officer's name, if I pronounce it correctly, uh, was McTyrian. This happened in Summit County. Uh, and in that case, uh, he was shot in the line of duty. Sure. And uh, there was uh, ultimately a trial in that case. And there was the vote for uh, the capital murder imposition. Um, one of the other ones that um, I'm aware of, which is now the, moving to the A7, the felony murder rule, 
uh, and that is and during the commission of a felony, uh, one is killed. Very tragic case. It was at the very beginning of my legal career uh, that I worked on at the Summit County Prosecutor's Office. It was State versus Glenn Benner. And in that case, uh, Mr. Uh, Benner had accosted a woman uh, who was drunk uh, at Blossom Music Center, took her into the woods in just a, a horrific uh, way that she died. Uh, but then um, later that year, uh, he would then um, kill a woman by the name of Trisha Bowser, if I have her name correctly, going back a couple of years now, yeah, in memory, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, killed her in the very same manner. So there was a signature pattern that uh, was and developed. And that trigger, triggered the capital. And that triggered the capital. And the way that they were ultimately able to capture him is he was going after his third victim. And he, Glenn, had believed, uh, because she was motionless after the actions that he had gone through, uh, of course, the underlying crime was a rape uh, and a horrific way of, uh, they would yeah. die. She actually lived. And she was able uh, to go to a wow. nearby home. And that's what started the entire case. Uh, and Glenn Benner, of course, was uh, found guilty yeah. and was on death row. And he's uh, since been, I think, back in 2006, he was... Uh, so the, fel the felony rust, uh, the, the designation, right. it, the rape was the felony. Correct. He was committing that. Um, subsequently, it, it led him to uh, the capital punishment. Okay. Correct. Which one? Uh, next, we've got the uh, A8, and that's what I call the witness elimination rule. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's where <Yeah. laughs> you know someone has seen you commit another crime. You try to kill them. Huh? And you, you try and kill, you kill them. And then uh, if you do, and that's, one, that's an A8 violation, then, of course, um, they would be subject to that specification. Sure. The last one that I'll mention is the A9 rule, and that's when you have children who I are see. killed. And uh, there are, unfortunately, too many cases. The one case that comes to my mind is at the very beginning of my career, when I was at the Summit County Prosecutors, uh, I worked with uh, uh, another uh, prosecutor, and um, he was a senior uh, prosecutor, and I was the junior prosecutor. And I won't forget that case as long as I live because during that case, it was a capital murder case. And um, the senior prosecutor uh, brought the family in and said to the family, um, I'm not gonna ask for the, the death specification. I'm gonna go ahead and give him 30 years. They all got up and left the prosecutor's office. I, I'll, I'll never forget it. They left, phone calls came in. I get hauled into the office with Roger. Lynn Slaby's there. and beads of sweat are coming down. I'm thinking, hey, this is my first big case. I'm going to get fired even before I get started. Mm -hmm. And um, then I remember Roger uh, telling uh, Lynn, he says, look, let me meet with the family again. And I can convincingly tell you right now that there will be no trial. No, they will want this to happen. Uh, in turn, we did meet with the family again. We were able to get some of the family members together. The mother was there. The grandmother was there. I remember, of course, uh, the uh, brothers and um, the aunts and the uncles. And to save time uh, after that meeting, um, they were in full agreement that they didn't want the capital death spec. Okay. And that's because a nine month old child was, was child. murdered, brutally raped, and killed in that case. Wow. And uh, that defendant has since. When uh, we get to the person. capital stuff, Russ I, I, Russ, I guess we're to the end of the line as far as bad and evil things, right? That, that's it for now. That's my little dissertation well, on evil, right? Well, <laughs> you, you know, that's, I, I think my, my viewers are very much appreciate this because I think there's great confusion on what they see in just the popular media watching television shows mm -hmm. as to where you have actually specified in Ohio law. Now, while on the subject of well, Ohio law, let's shift gears. Almost all capital cases wind up on appeal. Fair <laughs> state? Yeah, that's forever and ever and okay. ever, some will say. Right. Yeah, right. Sure. Well, this very case you worked on, I think Mr. Holman said in the paper, this could be as long as 20 years. That Correct. Is. Okay. All right, now, how does the appellant process differ in a death penalty case as comparison, let's say, just an ordinary felony case that you and I might handle okay. you know, on a regular basis? If I talk too much, let me know. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> on an appeal, criminal case, you, of course, after the trial, you have 30 days from the date of conviction. Conviction is a term of art, meaning you've been convicted by a jury and you've been sentenced okay. by the court. Once you've then been sentenced, 30 days 30 starts days to tick. That's your appeal as of right. You would appeal to the Ninth District Court of Appeals, of which um, Medina yeah. County yeah. is. You and I do it all the time. There you go. 
And then after you go from the state court of appeals, your next appeal is to the Ohio Supreme Court. Yeah, if they take it. If they take it, either because there's a constitutional question or you have a conflict yeah. of jurisdictions. If you then are successful in getting your case before the Ohio Supreme Court and you don't like the result, then you try to make that magic leap to the United States Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. There you go. So that's the process on a criminal case. Yeah, ordinary felony case, one you like go. you and I might handle on a regular basis. Exactly. But it's different. Correct. How? You go directly to the Ohio Supreme Court. Oh. Don't pass go. Don't go to the Ninth District. So the Ninth Appeals. District, in, 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 in your most recent case, yeah. nobody's going there. Well, let me, let me backtrack just to say this. Eventually, they will go there. But no, on the direct appeal, they go directly to Ohio the Supreme, Supreme Court. Ohio Supreme Court. Yeah, we've, had, we've actually had Supreme Court justices on the show. Uh, that's interesting. And that is, that is uh, that's statutory? That's statutory, and that is your appeal as of right. Okay. So probably nobody would ever not exercise that appeal as of right. Correct. I mean, and consequently... This is where the clock starts ticking for many years to go. Right. Okay. When, when you finished, I happen to be there that day, your, 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 your case came in actually two phases. There mm -hmm. was a, a, the guilt phase, like we always talk to a the, tri the trial phase. The, the trial, trial phase. phase. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I had it backwards. No, that's but, right. But that's, I guess I'm in a hurry. I, I, I know what I'm, you're I'm saying. thinking that. Saying. Sure. Okay, trial phase. The, the yeah. jury came back after they deliberated for right. however many hours they deliberated, and, and they mm -hmm. rendered a, a guilty verdict. Okay. Correct. All right, but it was different there, Russ. It, 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 that's where a capital case apparently is different. How, how does that work? After the trial phase is complete, then you immediately go into what's called the mitigation phase. That's the second phase. First phase is strictly about guilt or innocence. Yeah. Second phase is, if you get to the second phase, what is the consequence? Same what is jury. Your penalty? Same jury. Correct. Okay, so that's one of the reasons this thing took three weeks. Correct. All right. In the penalty phase, how is the trial judge decision impacted? In other words, he, he generally, he or she, mm -hmm. person normally renders a sentence. But if in the second phase here that we're talking about, your jury, I think, came back with the death penalty. They, they first came back uh, with uh, the guilty. Okay. Then we had the mitigation, as you said. Right. And they came back with the recommendation for the death penalty. That's correct. So, and, and I think in... in I, I think it's all public knowledge. Where right, I don't think right. we're going anywhere. We, we no. shouldn't be. But Judge Kimbler then, in fact, did sentence sentence your client to to death. Right. Okay. Did he have to? Did he have to follow the ruling of? I, I laugh because uh, uh, one of my colleagues made the comment, and this is no offense to the judge. If any judge wants to get reelected, he better do. That. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> but I got to compliment uh, Judge Kimbler, and I mean, I, I've been in front of a great many great judges but he took the time and literally because under was it 2929-03 d2 and d3 of the revised code there is a process and whether it's uh, the judge or a, a three judge panel where you don't have the jury yeah and to go back to your question about you know what is does that force the judge's hand the judge has the ability to take the jury's recommendation of death and say no uh, I'm not going to impose the death penalty. Now, if the judge does, as Judge Kimbler did, then he has 15 days to issue a written opinion. And that written opinion has to go directly to the clerk of the Ohio Supreme Court. Okay. And he then has to, as the jury did, say that beyond a reasonable doubt, the aggravating circumstances outweighed what are called the mitigating okay. factors. But to go back to your question, if the judge decides that he's not going to impose the death penalty, then he has three options. Life without parole, life with parole eligibility after 30 years, or life with parole eligibility after 25 years. Now there's a little um, caveat to all of that. Certain crimes, if the judge says, no, uh, you know, we're not going to impose uh, the death penalty, there are still some crimes that dictate that the judge has to impose 
life without okay. parole. Okay. Uh, but basically, though, that is... But a judge could... He could. ...run counter to a jury yes. of this guy's peers... Correct. ...that says, capital, we, 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 we say death. Right. And a judge could say no. Correct. This jury, the, the jury that you were in front of in our recent Medina case, as well as all of the other ones that you've done over your long career, Russ, okay. is this a special jury? Are they picked differently than... Uh, I mean, if I get called for jury duty, I guess I'm not really planning on having to make a decision whether I'm going to vote to take somebody's life. Mm -hmm. So is the process different? The initial selection is always the same. They call jurors from okay. the registered voters yeah. in the county. That's the same. But the selection process is different. And the reason is, and the judges who handle these cases know, they've got to get right to that what's called Criminal Rule 24 challenge for cause. Okay. And uh, I could spend a lot of time no, talking I, about I, that, but I'll, I'll, I'll a, summarize. This is a fascinating yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Okay, good. But my right. point is, when you come, you have defense jurors look at these, um, defense attorneys look at these jurors in a different light and the prosecution sure. looks at the very same jurors. I call it the, the one in, everybody has their different system. I call it the one in five system. Um, judges are looking for threes. Um, defense attorneys are looking for ones. Prosecutors are looking for fives. And I don't mean that in a bad way. What I mean is this. From the court's perspective, they want a three. That's someone who can impose the death it's sentence if, it, if it's warranted. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you're going to have to convince them. You're going to have to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt, no. first in the trial phase and then in the mitigation okay. phase. All right. That's what a judge wants. Prosecutors, and I'll pick on them first. You know, right. I can do that now. I used to be a prosecutor, so yeah. I can do that. So, uh, we're all right. But prosecutors are looking for fives. Fives are what I call killers. Okay. They're life takers. They want people on there who are just this side of. I gotcha. You tried with murder, I'm gonna push All right, the button. Okay. And then this is the world according to Russ. Yeah. Um, ones are life givers, and life givers are those who will sit and they will deliberate, and they're gonna say, "You're gonna have to yeah. really, yeah. really, 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 really well, convince that makes me." Makes sense. And that's, and that's what we're looking for. And, and you know, how we get there, everybody has their own science. Yeah. But that's the, the But I guess that's, you've done a great job of summing this up because I knew that they came from the same pool. Mm -hmm. I knew as I watched you and your colleague and Mr. Rizavi and Mr. Holman, the voir dire is the same. But I guess the difference is what you're looking for there because... This isn't about somebody going to this is somebody's life. Correct. And in, in deep in somebody's soul, they'll have to make this decision. Do you ever have somebody says, I just can't do it? Sure. And I've had them do it both ways. And this case is a, a prime example. I'll draw from other cases, though. And that is I've had some jurors who will sit through the voir dire process. Because, yeah. you know, we do an individual voir dire yeah. of these folks. And we're asking them questions, and they will look at you and they will tell you, under no circumstances can I vote to kill another human being. That, that guy can't be on the jury then. He cannot. He's, he's a one. <laughs> Yo, he's a one, but you're yeah. not going to get him. But he's, he's a bye-bye. He's gone. <laughs> he's gone. So, I mean, and that, that's not peremptory. That's, that's for That's for cause. cause. And, and by the way, another quick change in uh, normal criminal cases, you get three peremptory charges. Right. In a capital case, you get six. I see. But jury, select, jury selection is yes. always critical in any trial, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I guess jury selection in a, in a capital case goes right to the top of the heap. It does. It's intense. I mean, we were doing, you know, you have your, the court has its own questionnaire yeah. that it has these folks fill out. Um, Carrie and I had our questionnaire sure. that we had created uh, the prosecutor, Mr. Dean Holman, had his questionnaire that he had created. And, you know, we had a hybrid. i got to compliment everybody. Not to say it, but we had a hybrid that worked for everybody and pretty much ferreted it out whether we're going to have a one or a five challenge. And that's what okay. we were able to do effectively because there were fives on that uh, veneer. Uh, and you have to be concerned about that, too. Well, Russ, this is, a, at least to me, is a very, very interesting topic. And I think to my jurors, and we're, we're going to be running out of time here shortly, I guess... 
in a minute or so that we've got left. Sure. Why do you, why do you do this? I mean, you know, you really, I mean, why would you as an attorney take a death? You actually have to have special training to do this, correct? Oh, you have to be Rule 20 certified. You have to have tried so many felony cases, so many murder cases, so, et cetera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had to steer your career in this direction. Right. You, at your own expense, I guess, paid for some of this coursework or CLEs to get you there. Correct. Okay. Why? What, what, what motivates you? Speak, speak. I know you're speaking uh, as attorney okay. Russell Bazzelli, but talk as Russ. All right. Um, very quickly. I'm, I'm blessed to be a second-generation American, and I've got to thank my grandparents for all that they went through. Uh, one of my grandparents was made a slave on a railroad and he was able to escape and he did it by running and as near as we can figure he was somewhere in Georgia made it to West Virginia and then by Ohio he put his life on the line and he did it because it was the right thing to do and I want to give back because of him running okay. I'm here and I'm thankful for that and oh, also I have to say my, my wife Gail Bazzelli, beautiful woman, love her very much, and I do it for her and our seven children, our blended family. Uh, and real quickly, that's Brendan, Sarah, Bryant, Benedict, Sean, Brett, and Stephanie. I don't know if I can say that or not, well, but that's fine. I want to say it, but well, that's I mean, why I, I do it. I, it was a, kind of a personal question, but you, you knew I was going to, I, I yeah. prepped you, you knew I was going to ask it to you. But I mean, I think uh, for somebody to, to play the role of a defense attorney, be a defense attorney, be a good defense attorney, you've you got to reach deep. No, we appreciate that. Thank Russ, you for the we, opportunity. We, we could go on. <laughs> We're going to give you an open invitation. If I'm you tired. I could talk all day. If you want to come back, please. I'd love to. Thank you. It's been my pleasure back. to be here. It was uh, very informative, and it was a great show. Thank you. you. Great job, Russ. Thank you for the opportunity. Comments made by John's guest on Law Talk are solely those of his guest and do not necessarily reflect the views of Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project. To view this show and others, go to www.cdzclub.org. In the Wandsworth area, a complete listing of dates and times of this broadcast, tune in to WCTV Channel 15, or log on to wandsworthcity.com and follow the links to WCTV. At CZ Clip, we're devoted to the education of today's legal issues. Fueled by the public's keen interest in our legal system and current events, CZ Clip is dedicated to the educational venues aimed at enhancing the understanding by all citizens, regardless of age, education, occupation, or wealth. A function of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project.